Uh, it's now, uh, where are we, Monday morning and um, it's very bright so please excuse um, sunglasses but I can't really look up at the camera with the sun quite so in my eyes. So uh, thank you to everybody who joined us for our live chat yesterday. Uh, just to clarify our, our vague aim and it is really vague uh, is that on a Sunday we'll alternate uh, each week uh, the time that we do our live chat. So one week it will be 2pm uh, British Summer Time uh, and the next week it will be 7pm British Summer Time and this uh, this will allow people in Australia to join us uh, as well as those in America and uh, and in Europe. And so far that I know of uh, we don't have anyone from, uh, from India or uh, parts of Asia joining us for live chats but uh, that may come in time which would be nice. Uh, but what I did say is that I would look back through uh, all the comments and the chat and any questions that were un unanswered uh, I would answer today and that that will be my plan uh, that if you have asked us a question and we don't get around to answering it I'll then answer it at some point during the week uh, before the next live chat. So yesterday I was asked about beetroot because uh, we were talking about uh, having roast beetroot for, uh, for lunch. So I thought I would show you uh, exactly what I do with the beetroot. Uh, so as we speak, I am <laughs> putting on my gloves. And the reason I use these gloves while I'm gardening is that uh, for the last two years, I have uh, I've caught infections uh, in my on my hands, in around my fingernails, um, and I'm assuming that's from. Uh, working in the soil so I just thought this year I, I would try and protect them and so far uh, it's worked really well so after I've pulled up the beetroot the next thing I do uh, is just to remove the leaves and I literally just I twist those off these go off to the chickens who like them uh, very much. Uh, the only thing I have noticed is that uh, the next day they then have a fairly brightly coloured poop uh, and I have to remember not to panic uh, about my chickens being poorly. Uh, in fact it's because they've been eating beetroot leaves. Um, and the other thing I do uh, while I'm out here is just to snap off the little roots um, and I literally just drop those back in the soil because they'll rot down uh, and they'll just add uh, add to the soil and then I boil them as they are um, for about 10 minutes uh, just in water uh, I don't salt it or anything I just literally just boil them like this uh, for 10 minutes I tend to put the lid on um, to stop the splashes just so there's less uh, bright purple and pink splashes all over the tiles uh, at the back of the cooker uh, and on the cooker it doesn't matter if you don't uh, so I boil them for about 10 minutes um, and then drain them and then at that point uh, I leave them for uh, a few minutes uh, to cool a tiny bit or I just flash them quickly under some cold water. Uh, I don't want to cool them down completely but just to stop my fingers burning. And at that point you can literally just rub off the skin. Uh, it will just literally come away. Uh, then I slice it into uh, quarters or eighths or sixths or you know whatever size pieces I want. Uh, and then they go into the roasting tin. Uh, it's very simple. It is a very simple thing to do. And the other option uh, that I do quite a lot is to do that 10 minute boil um, and then uh, not just flash them under cold water but really rinse them under cold water till they are properly cold. Uh, take the skins off, uh, cut them into pieces and then lay them out on a baking sheet and put them in the freezer. And then when they're frozen uh, you can uh, take all those slices and put them into bags so you have them for use uh, throughout the rest of the year and then I just take a few slices, uh, frozen slices, uh, pop them in the microwave or just leave them on the side to defrost a bit uh, and pop those into the roasting tray. It, it means that we've got uh, that lovely fresh fresh 
uh, taste of beetroot uh, all year round. Very good. I'm growing uh, several different types uh, of beetroot uh, and these uh, these big round ones uh, are called boltardi but I'm also growing uh, long cylinder shaped ones and um, this one's easy to remember what it's called it's called cylindra um, and do they taste different well do you know I haven't tasted them side by side uh, we know we like them both uh, I grew them both last year um, and we certainly enjoy both of them so they're not all uh, quite as long and thin not as shorter and fatter yeah. and uh, and just as the uh, the boltardi come in in different sizes too and I'm also growing a, a white variety uh, I can't remember the name now but I'll put it on the screen um, and they're nowhere near ready the, the leaves are only about three or four inches high uh, so they will uh, they will be ready uh, in a month or so I would guess uh, and we'll have a look at those then I was also asked whether our solar fountain had arrived and yes indeed it has and uh, I followed the instructions, <laughs> the slightly cronky instructions uh, and put it in the pond and it lasted for about 20 seconds uh, before all the gunk in the pond uh, clogged up the filter uh, and clogged up uh, the little disc that goes on top of it that allows it to have a, a sort of uh, little individual jet so I took that off so now we just get this sort of blup uh, <laughs> let me show you <laughs> The other thing uh, that I said yesterday I would include in today's uh, video is an update on the turkeys. So I filmed this uh, a week ago uh, for my patrons to have a, a turkey update. Uh, so here are how the turkeys are getting on. I promised you uh, a turkey update and uh, where are we? We are at week three I think uh, going into week four and uh, <laughs> you will hear quite a lot of bird noise right now because because we've got a, a family of uh, sparrows uh, living in a nest just up here uh, and every time a parent brings some food back uh, they get very noisy but uh, as you can see uh, behind me here are other turkeys uh, they are doing so well I'm really taken with them they're not at all like chickens or ducks in their behavior Whereas uh, chicken chicks seem to have a, a sort of innate curiosity and if you put something new in the, in the nursery pen they'll look at it for a moment and then they'll go over and investigate very quickly. The turkeys are much slower and more considered and much more timid about going to have a look at something new and they do this lovely behaviour of really stretching their necks out sort of making themselves almost horizontal um, to have a look and to investigate it uh, before they, they go anywhere near it. Um, sorry about all the noise. <laughs> That's the joy of having chickens around and they're all uh, busy in laying mode at the moment. <laughs> I think we're being joined by the noisiest of the group. Good morning. Hello. Oh, you are a noisy girl.
well that's it for me today uh, I'm heading off to my therapist to hopefully get my back sorted out and so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today I hope it's a good one and I also hope you'll join me again tomorrow Thank you.